Hi, I'm Al Progers. Welcome to Just Off the Highway. For this episode, I've been out chasing snow. Not that kind. I mean real ice, cold as a barbel's butt crack snow. Now spring is here. The weather is beautiful. But just a few weeks back, there was a sudden snowfall on the Drakensberg Mountains that caused absolute havoc for people caught traveling between Johannesburg and Durban. See, the mountains of South Africa aren't the highest, but you underestimate them at your peril. Every year there are reports of people going out for a casual stroll in the sunshine in their flip-flops and getting caught in some vicious storms. So when I heard about the Drakensberg snowfall, it reminded me of an old tragedy that happened once a long time ago when a terrible storm hit. It's a story that's kind of haunted the edges of my memory since I first heard about it as a kid. And as soon as I knew that the roads would be clear, I charged off looking for snow. I didn't find it. But I think I found something more significant. Hi folks, welcome to the incredibly picturesque but also enormously busy N3 highway at Van Rienens Pass. Now this is about halfway between Johannesburg and Durban. But I want to take you just to the other side where there's another valley. One that contains a story of incredible heroism but also a mystery that's kept South Africa enthralled for over a hundred years. I'm very near the village of Van Rienen and this road was closed totally because of snow only three days ago. But now it's open again. The snow has just about completely disappeared. Today I'm going just off the highway about 25 kilometers northeast of Van Rienen. I'm going to be driving the De Beers Pass on the edge of the Drakensberg Escarpment. Here we go. This is on the edge of the Drakensberg Escarpment as the road winds its leisurely way down into KZN. And I mean leisurely in the same way as a puff adder strikes because this road can bite. When they recommend 60 kilometers an hour, they are not kidding. Now, believe it or not, this road almost became one of the busiest highways in South Africa. Because in recent years, there's been a very controversial but very real plan to change the N3 route to bypass Harry Smith and Van Rienen and make this the route instead. Uh, it was thought to be safer than the current routes and shorter. But unfortunately, or who knows, perhaps fortunately, in 2017, they were forced to abandon the idea because of environmental and financial concerns. There's another reason that I've brought you here. This pass was named after a certain Hermann de Beer, who owned this land in the 1800s. And it's the scene of one of South Africa's most famous folk tales of tragic heroism the story of Rachel Ki de Beer. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the story, here's the basic outline, but there are several versions and some details vary. Sometime in the 1840s, a poor family arrives on this land. Their surname is also de Beer, but it's unclear whether they are related to old Hermann, the owner. He provides them with a simple house and advice on how to save up for their own farm. It's bleak, midwinter time, brown, dry felt like this. The family has two children. The elder is a daughter, Rachel, who's 12 years old. And the little brother is five or six, named Jamie. Now, these are not pampered kids of the 21st century. They are brave and tough and resourceful. And little Rachel Key already knows how to bake bread on the felt in an improvised clay oven that she's been taught to dig by hollowing out an anthill. And Jamie, he already understands the responsibilities of caring for animals. One afternoon, a sudden snowstorm rises up, catching the newcomers completely off guard. Their few head of cattle and livestock are out grazing, 
and the De Beer family must scramble to shelter them inside or they'll lose what little they have. And as they bring in these animals, someone notices that a young calf, little Rachel, his favorite, is missing. If it isn't found before the storm hits, it'll surely die of exposure. So their farmer and his only farmhand go out again to search. Rachelki and her little brother volunteer to help by looking closer to the house. The result is, I suppose, inevitable. The children get caught by the snowstorm. Unable to find their way back to the house, Rachel stumbles across an anthill of the kind that she often used as an oven. And she uses a stone to scrape an indentation in the anthill to use as a shelter. But it's not big enough for both children. And in the morning, when the storm abates, the adults are able to find them. And they discover little Rachelki blocking the entrance to the oven that she improvised for them. She's no longer alive. And they're horrified to see that she has removed all her clothing. But when they move her body, they understand why. In a supreme act of heroism, she has wrapped her little brother in all her clothes. He's inside the hole that she dug, alive, but unaware that she sacrificed herself to save him. So these are just the basics. It's been far more beautifully told, most famously by the author Eugène Marais. It's an iconic South African story. Perhaps like me, you've heard it so many times that it's even lost its power to shock. But maybe stand here in this winter with the wind slicing through you, even with the sun shining, and it reawakens the realization of the magnitude of her bravery. In recent years, there's been strong evidence produced that it never happened. It's all a myth borrowed from the story of Hazel Miner, who died in roughly similar circumstances in the USA. What did or didn't happen, I don't know. But in the beginning of this episode, I said that this story has been bothering me for a while. And here's why. Because like millions of people, I've driven between Johannesburg and Durban on family holidays many, many times, and I've never realized that the setting of Rachel de Beer's story is so close. I've always imagined that it happened far away, somewhere of no relevance to me, but it's not. It's 10 minutes away from the N3. It almost was the N3. And on those family trips, it's about this time, about halfway, that things start to go pear-shaped. In the car, we get irritated by the people's music and the iPad's batteries are running down and there's nothing to distract the bored kids. And the winding road makes everybody car sick and there's nothing to do but fight. And yet perhaps if we thought about it, the most precious things in our lives aren't the holiday or the car or the music or the devices. It's the people in the car. That's what's really valuable. So was Rachel de Beer real? I think she's more than real. Her story is necessary. Stories like these are the firewood that's been laid up to, to keep us warm, to see us through our winter. Be kind to one another on the road. Folks, if you're enjoying Just Off The Highway, please hit that like button and subscribe. It makes all the difference. And if you are able to help me make more of the kind of content that you like, join our growing club of members and supporters and get some regular exclusive bonus features. Just go to buymeacoffee.com slash lprogers and you can contribute as little as two US dollars and you don't have to make an ongoing commitment so you won't get caught by any fluctuations in the exchange rate. Cheers. I'll see you out on the road.